welcome to episode 61 of the Youth Squad Legends series with Stockport County. In this episode, we are going to ask, where are they now? And put the ex-Stockport County players under the microscope and see what their footballing career has been like up to this date. It's a very popular episode. It's something that I wasn't planning on doing, but realized it's around this time in the series that we do the Where Are They Now episode. So um, yeah, probably should do it. And um, yeah, let's go and let's go and see what's been going on because you can see that we are at the start of the Premier League season. So we've gone through the transfers. We'll talk about the transfers in you know minute detail because obviously episode sixty two will cover it as well. Uh, we will also go through player customization, what's been going on there, and all the fixes. Yes, name fixes have been sorted out. One particular player is standing out someone that i really want to sign um and then get on to the x players i think the best place to start in this non-edited episode there will be mistakes is to go into the uh, patron adder wonder kids because we finally got onto that 12 hours of admin i think yesterday just a lot of work and i'm feeling good man Honestly, I streamed it all. I'm feeling really good. And I'm, I'm glad to get this uh, this weight off my shoulders, to be honest. There they are. The uh, broken mini faces. Not that many wonder kids. And I, I know that certain patrons don't want to, you know, mess about with me. Some of the patrons don't want the hassle. But I feel like it, it's a missed opportunity. And um, yeah, my patron has been shrinking a little bit. And I'm only going to say a little bit because the support has been relatively the same and i know that i'll always have a, a core amount of people that will always support me um but if you have a bit of money laying around then it's always appreciated to uh, get yourself onto the patron this is the best time to claim some rewards because the rewards now are, are cleared up i've done every single one uh barring a couple because Firstly, someone will ask for Pavel Novak to have dreadlocks. We'd already sold Pavel Novak, and dreadlocks would look, look ridiculous. And for Rafa Reina to have a mohawk, once again, it would look pretty ridiculous. So I, I was going to deny that. But the guy who did customize Rafa Reina, don't worry, I have put the number 24 on, on our striker, okay? So um, here are the six wonder... No, the five wonder kids. That have been added because Anderson down here was an adder player that was added a long time ago, like three, four seasons ago. Okay, but these lads we've just brought on, and I've made sure that there are clubs that we could compete with. Okay, so we got Hakub. Oh, this this is a a big name, Marty Rosian. I guess. I mean, that's a good uh, attempt at it. He is a 84 overall central attacking midfield player. He's playing for Celtic at the moment. Uh, the person who wanted this Adder Wonder Kid wanted uh, Hakob to play for Celtic, and there is a possibility of playing Celtic in a European competition. So that's absolutely fine. And there's also a possibility that Hakob gets picked up by a bigger European club. And then we got Derek. I mean, the state, absolute state. Vet, you wanted this person added. Uh, Vet, you I respect Vet, you a lot because he he spends the first couple of months just watching the series, enjoying the series, and then when the workload goes down a bit, he actually uses up his tokens on Patreon. I, I respect the hell out of that. And this this person is is very intriguing. Derek, a goalkeeper. A, a blue haired goalkeeper at Bournemouth. I, I don't think we'll miss him, to be honest. Uh, Bournemouth did get promoted. Middlesbrough didn't. Sad, isn't it? So Middlesbrough did not get promoted. Jeff decided to add Juan Vitti. Oh, what a stay. I, I just, yeah, let's just move on. Shut up, Jeff. Uh, Jack Dotry? Dotry? Doherty? Doctry? I don't know how to say, pronounce that surname. Uh, but he's a United States striker playing for Salzburg, five foot ten. Uh, the guy who was adding this wonder kid, I know, got a goalkeeper last time. Wanted a wanted a forward. I gave uh, the nod for that. And then 
I think this is the best one of the lot. We got Crest Ukiwe from Switzerland, and that genuinely is Stucky, S-T-U-C-K-I, in the middle of crew. The person who uh, asked for this wanted Crest Ukiwe to be a Crow Alexandra player, of course. However, we are well past Crow Alexandra, and I think the best one to go for in this circumstance, I think Pascal Muller had a little loan at, at Nottingham Forest. Of course, in the same series, the same nationality of Theo Stuckey. Nottingham Forest in the Premier League, there's where Crest Akiwe is, okay? So we are gonna, we are definitely gonna see Crest Akiwe this season. And Mitchell Anderson, the adder player, well, he's, he's doing all right. I think he's like 77 overall. You can't see here. I probably should have opened up the cheat table to uh, make this easier on myself. And I probably will do that with a little cut in between. But I think Mitchell Anderson is about 77 overall. So um, as the other player goes, he's actually not having a bad time over there. I mean, Vitesse, maybe an opportunity there for a Conference League place or or a Europa League place, something that Stockport might aspire to this season with the right backing. Okay, talking about backing, where, where do we go next? Because we've got the shortlisted players here. Um, might as well talk about some of the new players. Uh, two players in particular stood out like sore thumbs. Cornell Barr, who was a free agent at the start of this summer, He's gone to Stuttgart. Now, you might be asking, why on earth did you not sign him up when, he's with, when he was a free agent? Well, Posh Kutze, if you recall, said that there were no transfer money at the start of the summer. So therefore, we had no money to even negotiate with. So Cornell Barr was free to move to Stuttgart. Uh, but the, the, real, the real winner here, uh, and I, I hate it because both of them are forwards, and I felt like we had the forward line sorted already, but... It seems fate has dealt a really bad hand to Johan Miranda. Uh, but we got Cornell Ball, who we might be able to move as a winger. That's okay. What we can't move as a winger is the absolutely sensational Ronnie Valdo. Not only does he have an incredible name, right? Six foot two. He's like 80 odd overall. Brazilian. Needs need to up that skill skill moves and weak foot, but you know what? You can do that in training. And he's got the Medi Dompy face. He's Brazilian Medi Dompy. Uh, most, most incredibly, like there's another Brazilian Medi Dompy called Zé. Uh, but if if we are to choose between Ronnie Valdo and Zé, then it's Ronnie Valdo all the way. So it, we're just keeping an eye on him. Uh, we've been really sensible, really sensible with the transfers this year. So we, we will go into that next. We will cover this in greater detail next episode. But we shall go into transfers and transfer history. Uh, this, is, this is probably the most sensible I've been with the transfers in the entire series. Because you know that there's been a lot of swap deals. Been a lot of coming and going of players. Just yo-yoing through teams. So let's uh, sort by date. Uh, we had uh, one of the youth players, Okin Namjalin, who's got promoted to the first team. He's gone out on loan to uh, that particular club. And through the word, and it looks like it's Turkish. So uh, Namjalin out on loan. And he's all, I think he's already grown by five. So he's already had a bump, which is really, really impressive. Caballero, who I thought was the worst player last season. He's moved to PSV for £10.3 million. Not going to complain about that. Me and the boys who were watching the stream found this uh, Brook fella who is a low overall left wing back, but has some fantastic stats for a winger. I don't know if we're going to keep him. It's nice to have another English player. We brought in a couple of English players this transfer, which adds to the sensibility of it. But if we do train him up, he goes from like 68 with not that much wages to 70 odd and easy to transfer if we don't want him. I don't think we'll need him, okay? But he was a free transfer, a free transfer that we could get. Then we got Ngugwe Batista. 
Uh, it's not real, and it's no real surprise why I decided to get someone called Ungugwe. And Bat Batista's a fantastic second name, but Ungugwe? Oh my goodness. Stoyakovici. Stoyakovici, fantastic sale, this one, at £12 million. He wasn't a bad little player. He, he was nice, short, stocky build. Um, kind of like a Noah Anderson too. But at £12 million for someone that we haven't really developed, I'm not going to complain that much. I really am not going to complain that book much. Romano Cox has found a new home at Lazio. That's fine as well. Uh, Romano Cox, kind of surplus to requirements anyway, because Rafa Reina is still, you know, doing a, a bit of business uh, in championship level. I don't know what the, he's going to do in Premier League level. But Romano Cox... Now we're definitely out of favour seeing Ronnie Valdo come in and that Romanian lad come in. We needed to move him on. We needed to get the finances there as well. 16.3 million. It's not to be sniffed at. Lam Kai Chung, a uh, youth academy striker, in that big pool of um, elite youth players that we got a couple of years back, I think. Uh, the the most exceptional of them will love more Kosipulu who's still at the club. Uh, but Lan Kai Chiang, he's gone to uh, Union St. Garland, I think it is. The Belgian club, question mark. Uh, he's showing great potential. He's £5 million sale. And then coming in, a player that he, don't, he didn't really have any kind of bad vibes about it. Wellington Steinbeck, there were a couple of left backs that... Were possibilities, 182 overall free agent at the start of the summer. He got snapped up, so it was all about signing up Wellington Steinbeck as a pretty competitive value, to be honest, 39 uh, 31.9 million. Um, I think Lecce, that team, had already thrown big money at Steinbeck, so we needed to make a decision there and then. He's an exciting prospect, so he's got a lot of growth. Still left him in him. Secondary left back. That was the position that we genuinely needed. And as much as I could have saved up, saved up, saved up for Ronnie Valdo right now, we needed that left back. We've got we've got plenty of decent strikers already. We needed a secondary left back just in case Creato got hurt. Sol Pinedo was sold to Portimonense. And that is £4.35 million pounds with the player. A little bit of a, a deal, a bargain for Dominic Sander. Excuse me, I'm going to cough. <coughs> Dominic Sander going to Monaco, the uh, six foot five, 17 year old at 71 overall. £4 million. Pounds. And then, right at the death, today in game. We have snapped up Real, who you might have seen in the series beforehand. We got him on a free. He's obviously not agreed a contract with Sao Paulo. And he's just gone onto the free agents, waiting for a new club. And as much as I didn't really want him, he was the best option at the time because we had no money. And if... He takes his opportunity at Stockport. Fantastic. We'll keep Real and sorry, Ronnie Valdo. But the idea is to keep this lad happy ish, grow him a little bit, sell him on, and he funds Ronnie Valdo. Perfect. I've really, really wanted to try him out because his shot power and long shots are ridiculous. So, why not? Why not? It's a bit of fun. It just so happened that this opportunity fell right in my lap that he, he left Sao Paulo and he was looking for another club. Okay, bring yourself in. If it doesn't work out, you get sold. Easy stuff. So I think that's a really, really sensible transfer right there of Real. And I, I do hope that he just scores some absolutely belting long shots because that would just be fun. Okay, okay, okay. What else? What else do we need to do? We've had a look at the transfer hub, haven't we? So these are all the lads from the on the short list at the moment. Most of these I'm not actually looking at right now. Aristoteles has gone up to 87 overall. Uh, the ones that 
you really want to look, really want to kind of focus in on and keep a track on Baba Debra, who uh, definitely will be making the move to Stockport at some time because he's called Baba Debra and uh, Ronnie Valdo. Everybody else, just a shame that most of the great names that have come through this year in the generated players are attacking monsters. We've already got some good strikers, man. We don't need any more. So that's the list. I think I'll need to cut it now so we can get the cheat table activated and we can unveil all the player data. Okay, let's try it now. All the uh, player data should be revealed. We'll go through the squad hub at the end of this episode, but now it is time to look at the X players. And thank you ever so much, Rodolfo, for providing me with a list of names of all the players that have been in this series. Um, he's actually right now looking for when Colorado Aiken was sold because I've just notified him that Colorado Aiken was sold at some point. Okay, top of the list. We go in alphabetical order from the first names. Agon Troka, a very, very quick uh, signing and sale here at the start, which I've done too much of this series. I don't like it, but it was... The way to get the players that I wanted. So, Agon Troker, we've not got him shortlisted. We're just going to have to manually search all of these. 81 overall, playing for New York City. And right now, before we've seen any of the other lads, I think what would be cool is for the people that are guaranteed not to come back to the club, who I absolutely say no to, for them to get a pretty solid overall boost and potential boost to see if they can compete with us later on in the series. I think that would be cool. Uh, Agon Troka, he doesn't need it. He's 81 overall. We might see him if he moves away from New York City. I think we uh, sold him to New York City. It was a swap deal with Johan Miranda. Of course it was. So next one, Agus Mulyo, the left back. He is now 75 overall. So uh, a, lot, a lot of good young players coming from our academy that are growing now. And um, Mulgill's looking like a, a pretty capable left bike. Lingby, Lingby BK, the Indonesian. I think that's Indonesia's flag, yes. Next up, Albert Little. So any player that, that seems to be struggling, we'll have a little talk about and... They might get a, a big boost. Albert Little, 72 overall. He's playing for RKC Volvike. Volvike? That might be Dutch. Uh, but it, it looks, summary-wise, a good, well-rounded central midfielder. Probably a little bit low on the potential. Let's, let's take a look at it. So his potential... Database player table info. Potential is at 78. So this might be a player that we go and uh, change and buff up the potential. Definitely not someone that I'd want to see back to the club. I don't see any need to bring back Albert Little. So maybe we buff up his potential and see where that leads. Next up, Alberto Soto. So he's in the uh, squad at the moment. Alvaro size. It says or size is next one that we're we're gonna search. So S A E Z Alvaro Size is a, a holding midfielder. It's been a long time since we've seen this lad. 22 years old, 71 overall. So we're still seeing greens. And my God, that is. He is not a holding midfielder. He is he is not a holding midfielder. He's actually really really good. He's better he's better than seventy one. I tell you that. Well, well, I water in really. He is exceptional. See. This is why I love Where Are They Now episodes. I would never have seen this coming. Look at the state of him. 
Oi, oi, oi. Something needs to be done about that. How much valuation? He's not that much. This is what I'm saying. If we got no money, Posh Kutsi is putting us into this position where we got no money. We got to look for players like this. This is... No wonder why he was underappreciated all his life. Central defensive midfielder. Never been. Never been, mate. Wow. Dribbling's gone. Is he? Is he out? Is it? Is it Winger? Question mark. He's all over the place with these stats. Play for Bengaluru. Benga Luru. Yeah? And I think he's been there since he uh, was moved from Stockport. My goodness. That, that is a big surprise. I was not expecting that. Amir Amadi. Well, I don't think is at our club anymore. Unless I've... Messed that up. Amir Amadi. Yeah, he's at Spezia. So that's another that's another player that I need to notify Rodolfo. Uh, he's moved 73 overall. Looks all right. Very good in the air. The heading accuracy at 88. What's his jumping? 85. Yeah, really good in the air. Really good in the air. Love that stuff. He's at Spezia, the Iranian centre forward. Uh, next up, I think he came from our academy, Gorung. So Andre Belbel, of course, in our in our club, Angel Gorung, <clears throat> Angel Gorung, seventy four overall, playing for FC University Cluj, Cluj Romanian, I believe. Uh, seventy four physicals are absolutely spot on. Angel Garung. I think there has been a, a significant increase there in his overall. His physicals have very much jumped up. Uh, he can't finish for the life of him. As a centre forward, he can't finish. It's a bit of a shame. Nepalese uh, centre forward. Next up, Antonio Creator. We'll see him uh, shortly. Argue with his uh, interesting lack of headband. And obviously, his mini face still has the headband. E75 overall. The left winger, five foot nine, rather quick, 85, 85. Like, it's, yeah, it's some decent winger stats there. Definitely someone that I don't want to come back because he, he just didn't really suit my winger play. Um, he didn't bring entice wing backs to try and tackle him, so you couldn't really use any kind of skill moves. He didn't really have that much pace to beat them on the outside or the inside. And yeah, it, it's just it's just one of them where. I'll happily pass. Uh, but if Arju doesn't have a great potential, might get upgraded, okay? To maybe potentially see him in the future. I would go and ask Google to sort out some new potentials for his book. You know how Google is. Um, it does uh, it does mess up occasionally, so I'm going to pass on that today. So we just had a look at Arju. Now, uh, one of the better names of the entire series, series Barbaros Altiparmac. I need to spell it properly. Bob, Bobby Ro Barbaros Altiparmac playing for Rayo Vallecano. And you know what? He is 78 overall. Got really decent uh, speed now. The right midfielder. Crossing, still pretty poor. He's got better finishing than crossing. It's not really great for a right midfielder to have. Uh, but his ball control and dribbling, spot on. It's a, I guess it is nice that you're seeing a lot of deviation from the norm that FIFA usually like sticks pretty close by. And that's why we signed Victor Papitska in the first place because he was a central midfielder with 80 finishing, which is pretty crazy. Um, I do like those kind of deviations and alterations in the guy's stats that's why i was so interested in real at the start because of his shot power and long shots being so high in comparison to everybody else's barbara salty power matt done cabasage next one we'll see him later callum hunter now this is a player that i've completely forgot about callum 1l callum hunter he is scottish and he's the first one below 70 overall. How about that? Definitely no need to uh, bring him back. 
right back is all shut up, sealed for the remaining remainder of the series, unless, touch wood, Soto and Cabasau get injured at the same time. Let's let's not hope for that, shall we? But there's Callum Hunter. Um, definitely see him get upgraded and see if he can move away from Hartlepool. I think we'll have a tweet or a couple of tweets later on outlining the changes to these players and uh, what overalls they get upgraded to, what potentials they get upgraded to. So you are in the know. I'm just definitely not doing it within this episode. You're just seeing what they're doing right now at this minute. And who knows, right at the end of the series, we might have another one of these just to get you up to speed with everyone and see what they've done, how they've changed and the transfers that they've made if they are to be upgraded like Callum Hunter is. Carlos Zuna, he's still at the club. All right, Colorado Aiken. I know that we sold him. Colorado Aiken. I would guess, I'm going to guess that Colorado Aiken and Amir Amadi got sold at the same time and Rodolfo's just missed it. Uh, he's a good left back. He is a good left back. And I think I wanted to keep him around. Um, he's 75 overall at the moment. It's just that I believe there was a decent bid on the table for him. And I'm like, I couldn't, couldn't really turn it down. There you go, 75 overall. We got ourselves Wellington Stein back now. I'm not completely shutting the door on Colorado aching to return. Because I like him. And if Wellington Steinbeck is not the player that we wanted at left back as a backup, <clears throat> then what if we were to sell Wellington Steinbeck, pocket a bit of the money, sign up Colorado aching for a bit cheaper. We know he can do a job as a, a backup left back. And then put the remaining money on to signing Ronnie Valdo. Because Ronnie Valdo now is my... That, that's my main goal. 100%. 110%. I want Ronnie Valdo so much. Anyway. That was Colorado Aiken. Connor Cummings is next. I think this was a goalkeeper, wasn't it? Connor Cummings. A goalie that we had really, really early on. 66 overall. Playing for Benevento. I do apologize. The dogs are downstairs. There's four of them downstairs. So if you can hear them at any time, like I've just heard them, then I, I can only apologize. I don't really have much say in the matter. I'll try and talk over them. Uh, he's got pretty decent goalkeeper kicking. I think all the distribution from our goalkeepers have been pretty exceptional over the, over the, the series. Damian Ellis is next on the list. We know about this player. He's still at the club. Daniel Cavallaro at loan, on loan at the moment, still at the club. We'll have a look at him shortly. Devon Woodbine, who I think was Canadian. And I didn't, I didn't really mind this player either at left back, playing for Lechia Gdansk. Left back, speed. Speed's not crazy. So he's definitely not someone that I bring back. There you go. Dev Devon Woodbine playing in Poland. So that Diego Caballero, he's just moved. We might as well show him again. Moved over to PSV. I think this is a really nice match. He, he definitely feels like a PSV kind of player. Some player that just doesn't make it in them them top leagues and drops downs to like a, 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 a Dutch league, for instance, and does really well. I can I can imagine him doing really well. And then we got Doug Nicholson. D-O-U-G. Doug Nicholson. A English. How about that? An English left midfielder. Must have been a long time ago, this. This is Doug Nicholson. Sold episode 38. So, middle of this series so far. Playing for Bologna. I don't think he's a first teamer for Bologna. Not gonna lie. Next up, Eddie Johnson. Oh, mate. I had the big sacrifice in terms of... Uh, the dynamic potential fixes that we've done. I knew 100% that we would not get everybody across the line. 
and made into a great player. Rafa Reina is struggling right now with his overall. He's still putting in good performances, and he is kind of a legend at the club, so I, I never really want to see him go. Edward Johnson, though, he should. In any of the other series that have been on the PC that have given the opportunity to high-performing, low overall players, he should have made it. However, I did straight up say that I wanted this series to be more like the console versions. We have to make them difficult choices. I think it, it's been a more interesting series because we've had to make difficult choices, including this summer when we've had no transfer money. We couldn't just sign the players that we wanted. We had to kind of think about what we actually needed Dog's going crazy. Do apologize. But Eddie Johnson, 74 overall. She's actually not bad. The overall wasn't bad. It was the fact they had no potential. Like, really, no potential. If I go to the FIFA 23 cheat engine right now, he's at 78 potential. So he's actually got the same potential as Rafa Reina. Yeah, precisely. Now, I'm at a bit of a crossroads here because I don't want to shut the door on Eddie Johnson playing for Empoli. However, if I say, no, we're not going to sign him up ever again. We are done with Eddie Johnson. I think we only sold him because it was a decent price. If I here, right now, say no, I can finally give him a potential that he actually deserves. However, he can never play for Stockport ever again. It's really, really tough, that. With the emergence of the Romanian centre-forward that could be a winger, with the inevitable transfer of Baba Debra, I think it's right to let him go. Just let him go. And finally give him the career that he absolutely deserves. And hopefully, fingers crossed, Eddie Johnson makes a return in one of the episodes but then we'll have to try and defend him will creator have him in the back pocket maybe maybe because creator is a hell of a defender eddie johnson it's been a pleasure and i didn't really want to sell you um i i do have a price tag for everybody and your price tag was met now we're going to give you the best possible future by upping that potential elio zulo the very quick departure after we figured out that the uh, cables were freaking out a little bit. Elio Zulo was in and then out to bring back Pegararo. So he's now at Salernitana. I think this was a swap deal as well. Really, really solid sprint speed there at 90. He's going to be insane. You know he's going to be insane. 77 overall, 83 finishing. He is a very, very nice striker. And I'm sure he would have crushed it in the championship last season. However, he wasn't the one that we started with. He wasn't the one where we had the allegiances to. And I felt like we had to go back to Pegararo, especially for the champ. Especially for the champ. We're definitely not going to sign him up again, but he doesn't need changing bit blocked nose is a bit blocked might cut here to blow my nose so be right back <laughs> Ernesto Cruz Ernest N-E-S gotta be down here he's a striker let's have a look 78 overall on Ernesto Cruz a player that I think came from our academy 83 finishing how about that Ernesto Cruz has actually made a really really solid go at it there you go. I think still playing for Fortuna Sittard. It's, it's just a shame that you don't see many transfers uh, from your players. Of course, I could go into the live editor by pressing that button and make some transfers myself, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Just let the game hopefully get to that conclusion itself. And maybe later on, we might have a board objective where... These players do start moving. But we're going to give FIFA every single chance it can have to get these players, you know, to their rightful conclusions. Ernesto Cruz, 78 overall. I bet his potential is a bit higher than that. 83. 83 potential. He's a decent Premier League striker, this lad. Get him in the Premier League, you know what I mean? 
Right, Farouk Kasawi, definitely not a decent Premier League player. Quite the opposite. He was the worst player in the entire save at one point, and he might still be at 43 overall. He has one stat, his sprint speed, that is not in the red. Absolutely incredible. Farouk Kasawi, free agent, Saudi Arabian, 20 years old, no hope of the future. Until now, because we're saying we're not going to sign him up ever again. And he's going to get the biggest boost, the biggest blossom ing of any player ever. That'll be fun to see where Farouk Kasawi lands. Juicy John, still at the club. Finn Fuchs. We know he's at Middlesbrough, unless he's moved very recently. Finn Fuchs, still at Middlesbrough. 81 overall. Oh, Middlesbrough. You absolute bottle jobs. You could have totally got promoted with that, man. Right, he's done well. He's done well for himself to improve that much. A fair play to him. He, he made some okay saves against us. He still looked like a, a bang average keeper, though. Pego Raro. And then we got Helder, the Brazilian winger. Might be this lad. Left winger. It is absolutely this guy. With an all right release clause. 76 overall. Playing for Hamburger. Let's have a look at his potential. Should be uh, in the 80s. He's actually gone down to 79, which is still okay-ish. We're not going to sign him up. So let, it, let his potential go up as a result of that. Next one, Imre Simon. I-M-R-E. Is that Turkish or German? Or Hungarian? <clears throat> I know, I remember Simon. Of course I remember Simon. He uh, was right at the start of the save, wasn't he? Of course. And we maybe deployed him as a left back sometimes because he was that left foot. Man, 64 overall, free agent. He's not got a club at the moment. Let's give him, let's give him some boost. I'll happily not sign you up ever again to see you flourish at a club. Get yourself a salary. Next one, Ivan Busterman say. Then we got Jack Barron. Hello, Jack Barron. Now I'm pretty sure we had a Jack Barron come in. So that that makes sense now. I knew that I was repeating myself. I've added a Jack Barron into this save, an Irish generator player that's dropped in this season. I've called him Jack Barron. Clearly, he shouldn't be called Jack Barron because this was where I actually used Jack Barron. So we're gonna change that up and use the next Irish name on the list. That's where that is. I knew that I'd used Jack Barron. 76 overall. His valuation is ridiculously high at 15 million pounds. Some nice, like, green overall. It's still a pretty high. Heron Veen. Yeah, I, I don't think he's worth that, personally. Next up, Jacob Turner. Jacob Turner, central midfield. Bold. I'm not going to say his first nickname that I gave him, but bold. I understand that some people might be hurt by those words, and therefore that's why I stopped the nickname. And it was just right to then move Jacob Turner on and um, just forget about the whole situation. Jacob Turner, 79 overall. Really, He's had a little boost, I think. He certainly had a little boost, because I'm sure Turner was only like 74, 75 around there. It's kick-started his career going to uh, Kasim Pasa. Turkish club. Cool. I've got a pretty high over overall there at £24 million. Might be a nice pickup. I'll keep the door open on that one. But it's probably not going to happen because of the history. Once again, didn't mean anything by it. But I'm sure you understand that I respect that that stuff. If if something hurts a particular subscriber in that, I respect that stuff, and I just move on from it. I absolutely wholeheartedly apologize for any offense caused. So let's go. Um, Jang Sung Chen, we'll see soon. Yan Regina has been a <clears throat> a big big question mark for me because 
I thought with Jan Regina moving away, oh, there has been a bit of improvement there finally. So there has been a, a, a jump in overall around the start of the new season because Jan Regina for an entire year stayed at 71 overall. And I was like, when on earth is this guy going to start growing? Finally, we see a bit of growth on him because I, I really do want to want to see a return of Yang Regina and it's getting slimmer and slimmer and it's looking very unlikely right now because of the emergence of, of the great Brazilian wonder Ronnie Valdo. Come on Yang, you're, you're better than this. Start growing mate. Anyway, is that Montreal? He, he could potentially come back, who knows. He's got a decent potential. Actually, let's have a look at his potential. No, no, no. Because I forgot his potential. 86. Not bad. Next one up, Jeffrey Knightfeld. Who, by the sounds of it, is German. There he is. Centre forward. German, yes. Was it one of the crack centre forwards? Potentially. Uh, just at a lower overall. 72. Oh, I know. I know this. It was a board objective, of course it was. It was a board objective to score three long shots in, a, in an episode. I was like, right, okay, let's try and give ourselves the best opportunity. And we signed up the best long shotter that we could at that time, which was Jeffrey Knightfeld. And he was atrocious. He was terrible. Next up, Jesmond Aquilina, someone that wasn't that bad. Just uh, didn't impress me enough to keep around, especially with the inflated uh, valuation. He's going to be insane. He was one of the elite young players that we brought in in the board objective, and he, he was one of the highest potential of those players. He's 18, he's already 78 overall. Um, maybe a return. Some insane stats, technically. Jesus. With these 90 free kick accuracy. you got to be careful. I would like to actually keep him at Atletico Madrid because that is a good chance of meeting them in the Champions League. And Jesmond Aquilina, a little bit older, he will be a handful. Let me tell you, he will be a handful for any of our central midfielders to really get a hold of and to, you know, stop, neutralise. Jimmy Gallagher, still at the club. We were looking open to, like, big offers for Jimmy Gallagher this summer, but nothing came through, which is which is good because he deserves his opportunity at the uh, top level. He, he reminds me weirdly of Craig Gardner. There you go. How about that? What a what a weird comparison. But he kind of he kind of like yeah, he, he kind of deserves to be in the Premier League, but he's not the top quality. Um, he's been kind of overshadowed. Quite rightly, by Marcus Toland, who was like crazy potential. He was like the great hope from our youth academy, wasn't he? So I understand why that swap had to happen in the central midfield spot. But there is no excuses for Jimmy Gallagher now to cement that third central midfielder position. Unless Victor Papitska decides to kick on. If Victor Papitska kicks on, Jimmy Gallagher fourth choice. But he'll still, he'll still be around. He'll still be around. Uh, Joel Valadez. Start with that V. Joel Valadez, central midfielder. He Mexican. I've pressed something. Press the triangle button. 72 overall. Mm, good ball control. Good dribbling. Kind of a worse Jesmond Aquilina. Yeah. Not bad finishing there for a central midfielder, though. We won't be bringing him back. Jan Miranda at the club. Joshua Poli at the club. Jerul Farrell. Another player. I think a wing back. I, I didn't mind. I didn't mind at all. And this might have been... Oh, I, know, I know exactly why this is. It's because at that point, Soto was so ahead of him. I was like, there was there's just no point of keeping him around. And you, you know what? He was right. Spot on. Cabasau then came in, but I swear Cabasau came in initially as the left back, didn't it? Because we sold Creato. There you go. Gerald Farrell. 73 overall. Not a bad player. 
playing for Huracan in Argentina. Next up, Kenny Murray, still at the club, looking for a loan. Kevin Linganzi, thank you ever so much. Bournemouth. I, th they might be saying thank you ever so much for us as well, to us, because Kevin Linganzi is obviously a wicked, wicked player. He just, he didn't fit what we were looking for. Pegararo needed another strong striker that could grab goals alongside him, because he's not an Obi Jackers type of figure. Pegararo needed that teamwork, but Pegararo also needed someone else that he could rely on that grabbed goals if he was misfiring. And I think Damian Ellis is that exact mold that we need. However, everything could change. Once again, I, I just have to point out, everything could change because I have the, this immense feeling that Ronnie Valdo is going to be absolutely insane. And he could completely, completely dismantle everything up top. What we know up top. In my mind, it's like R9 and the mad scramble that that would create in, in the big clubs in Europe. I'm not even saying that Stockport's a big club, but we have to be there first. We have to get there before everybody else. Kevin Lingenzi, immense, immense value on the player now. Good on him. A great player. 92 finishing. You will love to see it. I, he's going to smash it in the Premier League. I know that. And he would have been an all right player for us. Did create some limbs. That's what gave him his nickname in the first place. Uh, it just wasn't the piece in the jigsaw. The piece in the jigsaw just didn't fit right. It kind of was there, but it didn't fit right. Damien Ellis, I'm pretty sure you, you realize at the end of that season why we needed the Damien Ellis type figure to play off Pegararo and not do his own thing. Kofi Mahinu. Kofi Mahinu. Right back. He is 70 overall. I think someone was asking what the Benin wing back was doing. Well, he's at Napoli. He's in Naples. And he is relatively well rounded. 64 finishing on a right back. On a 70 overall right. He's, in, he's a centre mid. Surely. He might have actually started out as a centre mid and I've moved him to right back. That that also could be a thing. I can't remember everything that I've done in this save. Um, so, that's a possibility, I guess. Really, really sound. And uh, probably more than his 3 million valuation says. 85 potential, plenty of room to grow. He's going to be great. He's going to be so good going forward. But, he was just not... There was no need for another right back. No need for it. Kite Cook. And then we got a Lam Kai Chong who's just been sold. And we might as well give him another look. There it is. He's gone to Union St. Garland. However the name is. 72 overall. The Hong Kong striker, I think. It doesn't even show me on that screen. 71 finishing. Really, kind of low finishing. It's just weird. The stat spread on most of these strikers is not really concentrating that much on finishing. That's probably why there's just so much percentage of these saves where regen strikers get a greater opportunity than uh, youth academy strikers is because their stats are probably in the right place. Simple as. I remember, actually, there was one time where regen strikers used to be wingers. And their finishing was awful. Now, our times have changed. Hey, um, next one, Leonardo Solar. Oh, wow, Solar Power. Been a long time since we've seen Leonardo Solar. I thought the first time that I watched this guy, or played with this guy, I thought we might have had something. You know, once again, talk about them small, stocky winger builds. It could have worked out. Um, I've always... Well, I've started to like them smaller, stockier winger builds since um, Yuko Ike really redefined that kind of stature. Just absolutely blasted past people's strength. Solar just didn't have it. 
The strength, strength's only at 66. Got pushed off the ball far too much. Wasn't there. His center of gravity was not there. Next up, love more Kasi Pulo. Still in the squad. Marco Kramer. Why have we gone through a lot of players this series? Marco. Space K. Kramer, left back. 68 overall, the Dutch player. He was right at the start of the series, wasn't he? And he was um, a terrible left back, to be honest. Really, really poor. Got not bad. He's not bad stamina acceleration wise. So th there's that going for him. So fair play. After Marco Kramer, Marcus Gomez. I'm going to have to look at this player a little bit because I can't remember him. Marcos Gomez was a centre back. Oh, of course. Oh, my God. He's the Angolan centre back that we recently had. And I kind of wanted to keep him. But because of his forgettable name, which, to be honest, so forgettable that I've just forgot about him. Because of his forgettable name and the fact that we had centre backs coming through the youth academy, we decided to move him on. He was a good centre back, though. Doors always open for good centre backs. Not talking to you, Otacilio. We'll talk about you in a sec. You were you were you were a bit you were a bit worse than Marcus Gomez. And that's pointing lightly. So is that uh, FCSB? I don't think I should say Steyer Bucharest because I think them clubs have split ways. I, I don't know what's going on in Romanian football, okay? But I think that's the case. Right, that was Marcus Gomez. Hell of a player. Then Marcus Toland, already seen. Mason Wheeler, probably not at the club. There's another one that we'll uh, have to notify. Wheeler went recently, yes? He's gone to Middlesbrough. Damn, Middlesbrough just love our players, don't they? Dear me. 75 overall there for Mason Wheeler. I think that's a slight improvement. No crossing. High finishing. A lot, another cut inside merchant. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'll pass on that, Chief. But good luck to you, Mason. Stoyakovici. Just gone. Matthias Stoyakovici. Here we go. 74. Playing for OH Leuven. Uh, he has got insane acceleration there at 90. And that's that. Cool. Max Villams. Oh, yes. M-A-X space W. Let's try and find him. There's uh, a Max Villams there. Finn Harps. That rings a bell. He's 74 overall. Well then. Quite nice physicals. Still nothing really jumping out at me apart from that holding midfielder. The Argentine holding midfielder genuinely might go inside at the end of this episode, by the way. That's Max Villams playing for Finn Harps. Next up, we, we're almost at the end now. And I say almost, there's about 20 names left to go. Michael Van der Hoek was a centre back. Big bushy air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Curacao, six foot five, massive. Playing for Leon. 71 overall. Does he still have the high potential? 79. So the global dynamic potentials that I work on every single preseason hasn't really destroyed him. Still has a future. Uh, but at his peak right now, right now, he would only be like a good French League One player for a little bit. He might make it into a European fixture now and again. However, if I say I don't want anything to do with this player ever again, that potential shoots up. Michael van der Hoek becomes an absolute gem for Leon. And that's what I'm going to say. I don't want this player anymore. I thought he was a, a pretty pretty good centre-back. But 71, 20 years old, it was just a, a right decision to say, you know what, he's not the one that we're looking for out of the youth academy. We're bringing in... Um, Kenny Murray, we're bringing in Ryu Tsumi. One of those guys will be our backup, backup centre-back. 
not Michael Vanderhoek. Next up. Oh, Kowalczyk. You want to see something? This guy has absolutely smashed it. Let's try and find me up. Left by 82 overall playing for Valladolid. 82 overall. Definitely an opportunity here to make him the backup left back. Definitely not shutting the door on that one either. I think it would be really cool to bring Michael Kowalczyk back. A lot of returns in this series. It's been a, a very return friendly series, but then again, if you want me to play more to the console version of the game, you're gonna have to expect me getting rid of players to give them the boost up that we don't get at our club to bring them back and profit. Next up, Naresh Zubair. This guy was a midfielder, potential centre back. Really big. I remember that. Six foot three, Indian, high potential. 78 overall playing for Saar Saarbrücken. Gotta make that move away from Saarbrücken soon. He is insane. But I'm not interested. Noah Anderson! God, I love Noah Anderson, man. I would never have got rid of him, personally. But a price is a price, mate. 78 overall. Oh, to total. There's total possibilities here for a return. Mate, he got 83 finishing. Jeez. He's good. Technicals are absolutely spot on, mate. 84 acceleration could be could be helped a bit. 91 sprint speed. Stocky, short. Now, now that we've got that crossing sorted on the sliders, maybe, man, maybe. There was Noah Anderson. Paul Untege. Still saying that he's sold in episode 24. Well, that needs to be wiped off because we've got Paul Untege. Otacilio. Terrible, terrible defender. Never going to bring him back. Playing for SV Reed. I think I sold him to SV Reed. I, I don't think I've seen any players move on, which is so, so disheartening. That guy deserves to be in the Austrian League. Crap. Next up, the one that I think a lot of people were waiting for, Patrick Reddenstrand. And you might be surprised at what I'm going to say here. I'm not closing the door on it. I am not closing the door on Patrick Reddenstrand. I think it's going to be very, very difficult to see him being brought back because the last thing that I want to do is bring Patrick Reddenstrand back and, like, double down on my initial confirmation that this guy doesn't work hard enough or doesn't move because I, I, can I can feel the heat from the comments already. I felt like it was the right time to move from Patrick Reddenstrand. I think his, his opportunities to come back have been shortened by Jan Regina and now Ronnie Valdo. However, if... For whatever magical reason, there is an opportunity, there is an opening. I'm not going to say no to him, okay? His acceleration is great now at 91. It's just, he didn't feel like he was working hard enough off the ball. Sliders might help it. The fact that we changed the cable on the controller might help it. And that's what's in his favour. It would be wicked to see a successful return of Patrick Reddenstrand like I've done with Pegararo. So I'm not going to say no. It's, he's right there. He's, he's almost at his potential, I think, at 81. He's definitely improved since I saw him last. So his potential's at 82. <coughs> Playing for St. Etienne. Decent player, man. <clears throat> on the face of it. On the face of it. Hang on. It says Paul and Tege and Paul and Tege. But Paul and Tege's got... Put down here twice, mate. Ah, whatever. Pavel Novak. Another player that I didn't really want to get rid of. It's just that I, I, fe I feel my decision to play Arju so much at the start of the series or the second season. It's, it, it hurt him. It hurt him a lot. And I can't, for the life of me, find this guy. P-A-V-E. There he is. So there's two Pavel Novaks. One's a left winger. One, that's our left winger. 
He's, he's got a little bit of an improvement there at 76 overall, I think. Yes, mate. 80 crossing. Couldn't really complain about his crossing stat. With the slider changes, he bring he comes back, he might actually do a job. Because these players can cross now. I've had a little bit, bit of success uh, with the sliders in the preseason tournament. I actually finished top of the uh, preseason. Of course, I was concentrating on it a little bit more than what I would usually do. Because it brings us more prize money at the end of the day. Um, but these sliders probably need to get made more difficult. We'll, we'll find out soon when we hit the Premier League. If we are winning games left, right and centre, then it'll be like, okay, well, we need to get this sorted because clearly this shouldn't really be happening. However, if the crossing stays relatively similar, if it doesn't diminish like it was doing beforehand, um, players like Pavel Novak might get another shot. Might. I don't know. There's a lot of people that might get other shots here. Next up, Rafa Reina. See him shortly. Rami Bonu. He's going to be an all right player, I think. We didn't use him too much, and we got rid of him pretty quickly. So he should grow and flourish nicely. Terrible, terrible finishing. 61 finishing on a centre forward. Other than that, he looks all right. Centre forwards are just a bit dodgy, aren't they? Next up, Ramon Guerra. Oh, yes. Oh, boy. Talk about a player that could potentially make a move back. This guy's got to be good. This guy's got to be good. 82 overall. His release close is only 62.4 out of the 4 million. Eh? 95 acceleration. 93 sprint speed. Playing for Malaga. 82 finishing. Jeez, man. Jeez. Some insane mouth-watering stats in that now. His heading accuracy is pretty poor for a six foot four tall player. Can't really complain with any of the other stats on there though. Ramon Guerra, potential. Came in the same uh, youth report as uh, Rafa Reina there, I think. Erasmus Pearson, midfielder, I believe. He was sold episode 18. 69 overall, playing for Sundsvall. And, and all you can see there is 83 agility, 82 ball control. Not a player that we want to bring back. But there he is. That, that's, that's what's going on. I still think we've not seen a player get transferred from where we sold him to. Shocking. Reza. Great first name, by the way. Reza. Kanzade. Kanzade. Panathinaikos, right midfielder. Only 63 overall. So, uh, don't know what's happened to this guy's potential. Let's give it a little check. His potential's 82. What is going on? Why is he only 63 overall? What on earth? That's not right, is it? Anyway, Reza Kanzade. Kanzade. I don't know. Not fulfilling his potential. Riley Sanders at the club. Robert Franklin. This is going to be very interesting. But before that, I think I need to blow my nose again. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't suffer from hay fever. I, I feel like it's just some kind of like side effect from the uh, the cold, flu, potential COVID. Oh, I said the c word that I had like a few weeks ago. <laughs> So here's Robert Franklin, centre forward. Is it 79 overall? He's six foot five. Oh my. 81 finishing. Nice to see. Couldn't finish to save his life when he was at Sockport. Maybe he's having better luck at Benfica. Let's hope so for him. <coughs> Rodney Peters. It's it's not doubly. E. Was Rodney Peters a striker? Man. Must be getting him uh, confused with Marco Kramer. Rodney Peters. Obviously. <clears throat> yeah, he was sold to Rodez. Yep, he is coming back to me. I think he... Did he score once? Did he have an opportunity to score and he missed it completely? 
It was not someone that I wanted to keep around the club. But it was not a typo by Rodolfo. This is this is the spot on spelling of Rodney Peters. Rob Sporkslader. You have that. Right wing back. 71. Free agent. Not got a club at the moment. 84 short passing. It's a really nice pass in there. This is long pass. Long pass. 60. What a weird comparison that is. Chalk and cheese. Got good acceleration. Decent jumping. Probably deserves a club. We get a whole list of players that should be at the club. But I'm seeing Sammy Adabali, who was sold. Oh, and Romano Cox has actually just gone, hasn't he? So, hey, you know what? Have a look at Romano Cox. 78 overall. Really nice acceleration. Sprint speed, 85, 84. 82 on the finishing. Didn't see that finishing aspect come to life with Stockport. But... Here's what it is. Sumi's at the club. Then Samia Dabali. 69 overall. 93 acceleration is very good. Playing for Newell's Old Boys. 82 curve. Wish he had some free kick accuracy. He'd be a wicked free kick taker. There you go. Tunisian. Very nice. Next up, Sol Pineda, who's just moved away from the club. Sol Pineda. Boom. There it is. 71 overall. Playing for Portimonense in Portugal, I believe. Uh, stamina's fantastic at 89. 85 aggression. Really aggressive central midfielder. Has he got the tackling? Slide tackling. 70. Stand tackling. 78. He, just more of a defensive-minded midfielder. Something that we don't really need with Jang Sung Chan about. Senad Redzepi. You're right to the bottom of the list now. Senad Redzepi. Central attacking midfielder. Should still be playing for Sheffield United. 82 overall now, Senad. Uh, not a bad player. Obviously, we brought him and, and sent him off to the right-hand side, I think it was, when he played... Uh, didn't really play in the middle that much. Um, physicals, pretty solid. 87-87 for acceleration and sprint speed. Great agility. The price was very nice when we sold him. Has potential to be special. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the global dynamic potential that I do every season. Be very kind to Red Zeppi. He's now got 95 potential. Dear me. Dear me. So he's going to be just outrageous when he gets older. Socrates. Yep. Then Vianney Bisafi. Bis. Afi. No? Double S. Vianney Bisafi. Another player that could potentially make the move. Back to Stockport. Uh, but he's actually, he's actually dropped... Down behind Redenstrand now. Ha! Huh. So is he must have been killed by the dynamic potentials. He only got 80 potential. Interesting. I remember him having like 90 previously. So that's that's how mad things can change and how quickly things can change with the global dynamic potential. We've got this lad who could have made a return now, looking like he might not make a return because what Driv drove him what gave him an advantage over Redenstrand. He doesn't have it anymore. Redenstrand actually has a higher potential. There you go. That That's just what Redenstrand needs. Stuff like that to go in his favor and he might make a return. There you are. After that, it's Victor Papitska, it's Vladislav Duda, Yuray Lopez. They're all still at the club. Which brings us to the final, final bit. Okay. We're going into the squad hub. We're going to talk about all the changes that we made to the side. DK has brought... Right, okay. DK, if you're listening to this, I know that you've given me new kits for this Premier League season. And I'm going to try and make them work. However, 
My mod manager doesn't seem to want to load at the moment. I know that you can see the kit on screen and my kits work. The kits that you gave me last season work beautifully to the point where I don't need the mod manager at all. I don't know what's gone on with my game, but Steam just immediately opens the mod files and mods the game for me. So I don't really want to change stuff right now. Although that being said, if we can get the new kits, a season change would help. We might need a Discord call to, to sort that out. Squad Hub! Squad Hub! Okay, Daniel Cavallaro still at Stad Rem. Uh, he is a 76 overall goalie. Oh, with the hairstyle that I actually gave Duda. Oh, that's a shame. Paul and Tege is still at the club. I'm happy for him to just uh, stick around and stay as uh, the backup goalie. There's Ray Lopez with his, with his tracky bottom. 77. Potential to be special because of all his antics in our net. Lanray Brook, who could be an amazing, amazing, smart signing that we've made just because of the uh, stat spread. He's uh, planning with changing him to a left winger. It's only going to take him about 12 weeks. And we're expecting his overall to go up massively. This is Antonio Creato. Should we, should we keep it on this? Because it actually gives us an understanding on, our, on the development plans as well. Antonio Creato is insane. He's The only thing that he's really lacking is shooting. That's fine. He's a left back. Everything else... He's absolutely so and really surprised that he's only 76 acceleration, 72 aggression. Where's his sprint speed? 74. He's not that quick, but man, he, he knows where to position himself. But his position is actually pretty decent. Where's his positioning? That's definitely That's definitely a stat somewhere, and it's just not here on the attributes page. Awesome. Fantastic, lads. Thank you ever so much. Very informative. There's Welly Steinbeck. I'm calling him Welly Steinbeck now. I don't care. I know Wellington's still a wicked name, but Welly Steinbeck, that's that's just my nickname for him. Um, re, yeah, again, really, really smart decision to bring him in. A lot quicker there as a left back than Creato. So if we are against a, a really rapid, what, right winger, he might be the call. He might be the call. Uh, we'll have to see uh, what, he's developing, what his defending abilities are like. We shall see. Buster Manze is the boy. He's the Donny. He got a big, big uh, potential upgrade from you lads that were in the uh, live stream at the time. Everybody was saying, yes, this man deserves a plus three potential. So I think he went from 83 potential to 86 potential. He was the big increase, I think from last season he just had a fantastic season he keeps on showing us why he's absolutely goated in that position like his average rating from him to all the other center backs in a different world he is 0.3.4 overall rating better average rating better he's just insane uh next best riley sanders you'll notice that he's got the colonel sanders beard now oh mate oh mate i've found them beard ids well up there, Sporting DK. Yeah, again, shout out to you. He just told me it's in a, around, what, 25 to 35 ID. So I just flicked all around them. And I think this one is number 26, the Colonel Sanders. And he, he looks, yeah, like he means business. I'm expecting Colonel Sanders to step up again, step up another gear this year. Perry NG. There he is. Shush, baby, please. Kenny Murray. From 72 to 73, looking for a loan. Ryu Tsumi, potentially looking for a loan. But I would like to play with Ryu Tsumi before we make any decision on these two players, which one to keep, which one to sell. I've already played a little bit with Kenny Murray, and it, it was not bad. I just wanted to play the other centre-backs just to make sure that we had a bit more security in defence whilst winning the championship. Sumi has now got this opportunity. There's not that much expectation on him because there's not that much expectation on us the first season of the Premier League. So if he can pull, pull like a string of performances together, he might be the one. He's only got 67 defending though. 67 defending in the Premier League. There's uh, Vladislav Duda with his new cut, which means that Caballero will have to, you know, shave it off or something. 
Uh, there it is. A, a much more complete defender than Ryu Tsumi. The winner out of these two will have to understand that they will be fourth choice centre back. There's nothing about that. Or we bring back the Angolan. Or we just get another centre back in. Oh, I don't know. We'll see. If they're both underwhelming, that's the way it goes. But in this series, you can't say that I haven't given Youth Academy players a chance. Some of them have taken it. Some of them haven't. So Duda's changed a little bit. The big changes to come. You, you're going to hold on because Pegararo has changed. Pegararo has changed. Cabasau. What a player, man. Yeah, again, just like Creato. See see where my my uh, allegiances lie with these wingbacks. Just like Creato, everything is there apart from shooting. Amazing. Soto, lower on the passing, but you kind of expect that because he wasn't a centre mid to start off with. Uh, but... An incredible defender. There's one of the new lads, Ngugwe Batista from Guinea-Bissau. Got a nice five-star weak foot to start this all off. I think soon we will have a board objective where we add some traits to these players because there's just not enough traits going about at the moment. But see that? Nice little spread. Uh, physical defending, dribbling, and pace all in the uh, lighter green, or the, no, the darker green. The lighter green's actually the really good stuff. Hamza Ben Slimane is a Youth Academy player at the end of last season that we promoted. We don't really have a future for him. He's got an all right potential, like mid-80s, I, I believe, or low-80s. Um, it's probably just fodder, sale fodder, just to get a bit more money into the club. Victor Pipitska. Now at 81. Where's his finishing? 81 finishing, man. Insane. Incredible. What a guy. Unfortunately, not growing there now. Ngugwe is turning into a central midfielder, by the way. There you go. Um, a player that we've not talked about. Hang on. Why was this guy not in the transfer history? Let me have a look at this. This, this, this guy should have been in the transfer history. He's not. Hey. Okay, well, it's uh, it's a surprise then. Guy Van der Laan, wherever he is, squad hub, came in from a club. I don't even know if I've got the footage for that, to be honest, anywhere. But he's come in, and I had no real want for this player, need for this player. However, I just thought it was interesting that, firstly... His name was Guy van der Laan, and he was English. Football manager decided to have a, a weird Dutch slash English kind of player. And I searched him up, and he was like, oh my god, he's got incredible hair. And it all just started to, like, fall into place. Got incredible hair, he's showing great potential. He's got second wind, and it was like, oh, and he's English, of course. So he, like, helps us out, and I warmed to the prospect of signing him. And here he is. It only costs about three million pounds. I'll have to double check that if I can. Love more Kossi Pula. Uh, trying to train him up as a left back. We shall see what goes on with this player. He's got some nice stats. Long shots are 81. Bro, his he's, he's long shots are 81. Maybe. Let's take him off left back. Now that we got Willie Stein back, there's no real need for him to really concentrate on left back duties. If he's got long shots, maybe it's time to get him back on balance. Hey, eh? Marcus Toland. There he is. Changed his uh, facial hair a little bit. Made him have a pointy beard, which kind of elongates his face and makes him look, I don't know, a lot older. A lot more mature. He just, he looked really bland. I think everybody could, uh, could agree with that. So he'd grown his hair out a little bit. My God, some of his stats. Some of them stats are silly. 81 vision, 83 dribbling, 81 free kick accuracy, 84 long pass, 86 short pass. Forgetting about the 85 curve there as well. I bet he's a really good free kick taker. But we got my, I, I've got my heart set on Vladdy's life, dude. There's Jimmy Gallagher. He's gone up to 76. Good on him. Uh, so 76. And uh, he's, he's not bad. Stamina's fantastic at 83. 
everything else just a little bit worse than Marcus Toland. Jang Sung Chan. Oh my god. Brilliant. Yeah, it's these type of players. I am figuring out that it's these type of players that I love in defense. Whether it's defense in midfield, whether it's wing back, maybe even center back. Everything in green bar shooting. It kind of makes sense. They are just really good, barring the shooting aspect that you trust in the strikers. Here we go, Kite Cook has his dribbling. Ball control's at 86. His crossing's only at 63. But it's working on the output, man. Working on output, Kite Cook. Andre Belbel. Can't really uh, say the same for him. Crossing at 75. That is a 12 increase. Look at the state of Kite Cook's crossing in comparison. Man, we gotta we gotta get Kite Cook's crossing sorted. Joshua Poli, he could could make some kind of breakthrough season soon, just because of the speed. Ninety three acceleration, ninety sprint speed. Loves a bicycle kick. Could be there. I want to keep him around because I feel like there's something there in this player. Five-star skill moves, which you love to see. Uh, Juicy John, we were obviously upgrading his skill moves to get him to five-star. That is now done. So this needs to be changed. The development plan back to balanced is probably a good call. Oh, wide winger, where his sprint speed then gets really improved. And he's crossing, which is pretty low at 73, of course, because he spent so much time as a striker. Nangelin. He's gone up by five already. Just absolutely crazy. And then Johan Miranda. Poor Johan Miranda. Has not really done anything wrong. It looks like a really, really solid striker. And a good goal and assist ratio last year. Last year. You know what I mean? It, it just had to be put in the shadows because of the uh, competition between Damian Ellis and Pegararo at the end for that golden boot. And, and here he is now in danger of actually use, losing his Stockport place because of Ronnie Valdo. Poor guy. Poor, poor guy. Didn't, doesn't really deserve it. I'll try and make sure that he doesn't meet that conclusion and that we can raise the funds other way, way and Miranda can just be our fourth choice striker. This is Carlos Azuna. Been out on loan a couple of times. I think he might be on loan again. 71 overall, six foot three. Dominican Republic, not bad. 88 ball control, 83 curve. Where's his finishing? 64. So I'm going to guess he started out as a centre forward and then we started training him as a striker. Boy, he needs to sort out his finishing, man. Okay, deep breath, deep breath. This is what's happened to Giuseppe Pegararo. Bearing in mind, I really like this change, Okay. This is Giuseppe Pegararo now. And you might go, what the absolute F am I seeing? Okay. Some dude in the live stream that we did whilst we were doing all the admin for next season was like, uh, look, I've just, I've just uh, pledged to your Patreon, which, you know, greatly appreciated. If anyone watching this, uh, this episode wants to do the same, you know that it's greatly appreciated. It helps the channel out massively. Can we do something to Giuseppe Pegoraro? And then we were talking about what he's actually gone through. He really liked him having longer hair. Just seemed to suit the vibe, the kind of a Totti-esque vibe. But it, it goes a bit deeper than that. That after the stresses and strains that he's been under through the last season, the expectation of him coming back and actually performing, having that, Weight off the shoulders, finally getting stock pro promoted. He has had the summer of his life. He has absolutely gone ballistic. <laughs> he has he has enjoyed himself to the point where he wakes up and gets tattoos. Uh, wakes up with just a random tattoo on his arm. Like, where did that come from? You know what I mean? He has just loved life. He deserves to love life for a little bit. He's grown his hair out. He got tattoos all over the place and good for Giuseppe Pegoraro because that man had been through a lot over the last 12 months. I know it was sometimes when the burden of expectation is too large on shoulders, it, it can ruin your, 
day-to-day -day life. I, I've had that experience myself in university, and I, I feel it. I feel a real, real strong connection to Giuseppe Pegoraro now, because let me tell you, when that burden was lifted, like Giuseppe Pegoraro, I had the time of my life. Um, here we go. Damien Ellis slightly changed up the hairstyle because he, he really did look a little bit too bland. We've swapped Pegoraro and Damien Ellis's squad numbers as well. They've gone from 10 to 11, 11 to 10, uh, because Pegoraro, before he was sold, was number 11, and that's kind of more iconic, in my opinion, than him having the number 10. Damien Ellis goes to number 10, because it kind of works. Rafa Reina, he is uh, number 24, as asked by one of the patrons, at 69 overall. Not really much to say about this. Uh, agility is at 80. Sprint speed's at 83. He is rather quick. Hell yeah. Finishing. Uh, he's not the worst at 66. Oh, I, re I don't know how we're going to make it work. Obviously, more long glitches to come. We've got to long glitch him this summer as well. We've got to keep long glitching him. We've got to keep loaning him out. We've got to make sure that this guy gets as many boosts as we possibly can. All focus on exploiting the game goes to Rafa Reina. That's it. Next up, Socrates Alves with his ball control at 82, his dribbling at 87, his shot power at 87. He got good acceleration, sprint speed. Yeah, just a, a phenomenal winger. Need to improve on that crossing, but you see there with the three arrows, that's what we are focusing on. And then you go to the new player, Real. We, ch we changed the uh, hairstyle of because we got a lot with that hairstyle. Uh, I think uh, Andre Belbel is rocking that hairstyle. So we've got we're more of a Wittiness Chavango Jr. vibe. We haven't seen this a lot since Wittiness Chavango Jr. Uh, long shots, man, at 85. Shot power at 88. He's got playmaker trait, but that's only a, an AI thing. And there it is. He could be a, an extremely good wild card. I just think he's a very small acquisition. Just as a free agent, we were kind of interested, kind of intrigued. Got ridiculous, weird stats. And it just so happened that we had the opportunity to go and sign him on a free because he'd left Sao Paulo. That's it. I think we have covered everything. Duda. Get back to Duda for a second. Vladislav Duda. I might actually revert the hairstyle back. Who knows? It makes sense. Cavallaro was there before him. Anyway, Vladislav Duda, I didn't upgrade his potential. There was some people who were like, no, nah, he deserves plus one. We actually decided, instead of giving him a potential upgrade, I think he's like 90 potential anyway, that what he actually deserves is a plus 10 on his free kick accuracy. So we did that. He's now 78 free kick accuracy from what it was 68 it, that is Avduda was smashing in free kicks top corner at 68 free kick accuracy he could be absolutely set he could be the next Durante in terms of free kick taking we shall see I'm really really happy with the very small budget that we had that we've done so many good transfers youth academy we have got a Sarkozy, Narit Sarkozy, right winger. His potential has actually decreased slightly. He was up to the, the top of 94. Maybe someone that we keep around. It's just, it's so late. There's also that opportunity of maybe having another board objective where we can get some really juiced up youth academy players at an extortionate price. Who knows? I think that's it. I think we have covered everything. There might be a follow-up video. Uh, to show you how the players have developed, especially the ones that were definitely not going to sign back up, how they have improved since, where they have gone. Maybe if we even had a hand in one of their transfers to a bigger club. Uh, that will come right at the end of the series. And uh, until then, we're going to play a lot of games and we're going to enjoy the Premier League. So this has been Cutsy. Thank you ever so much for watching this episode of youth squad legends if you've enjoyed it then please give the video a like if you're not subscribed around here yet then press the red box down below and hit the bell icon for mobile notifications big thanks to everybody on the right hand side you'll have noticed that i have updated that patron credits list like i said 
And uh, that's the workload basically taken off my shoulders. I know that I need to do a lot of video messages uh, to people that have been pledging like $10 or more. They need to get done. I haven't done them in like a year plus. So I uh, desperately need to get on with that. But most of the workload now out of the way, which is just phenomenal. So big thanks to everybody that's been supporting me financially on that site. If you want to do so yourself, I know I've done it and I've said it like a couple of times now in this episode, please go and check it out. It's it's the best way to support me. Uh, but a big thanks. You guys are really helping by watching every single episode of this. It keeps the health of the series well and truly strong. If it keeps on going like this, you'll get that full series, that full experience. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye. Wait a second before you go. We got one more thing. We're going to sign Alvaro Saez. Saez. Whatever his name is. The six foot three CDM that we have found out to not be a CDM whatsoever. This is the kind of signing that we need to make to make the money back. Transform him. Sell him on. He could be so good in his new position, is a more attacking position, that we don't want to sell him on. But we've spotted something here, all right? Their asking price is 3.9 million, but you might have a chance with a deal at 3.5 million. So let's approach to buy. 3.5 million is a bargain. For the stats that we have seen, that is insane. It's not a return that what, what I expected. I didn't think that any of these old players, the players that we signed, sold like ages back, would have any chance of a return. But I would be a fool to say no to this. I'm going to be as cheeky as possible. Three million quid. Plus a 1% sell-on clause. Yes! Sure thing, pal. I'll give you 1% of the sale. <laughs> Absolutely immense. What could we make of this player? Squad roll sporadic. Happy to agree with that. Three years. It's good. Disregard that release clause. Stick the wage up. <laughs> Maybe not 10 times the amount that you were, were getting in India. Let's go 8,000. And that's a reasonable offer. Oh boy, I am delighted, and uh, delighted at a player that I completely forgot about. That's that's the crazy thing. So the uh, the cutscene plays. Alvaro Saiz, he should remember this building. He might have got polished up, spruced up, and uh, redeveloped, I guess, since he's uh, since he left because of the money that was coming into the club. Here we go. Maybe signing of the summer. Who knows? Wesley Martina, happy to see it. Never happened in a Where Are They Now episode where some someone has surprised me so much that we've gone for an immediate signing. And let's see what we can do with him. Back to the squad hub we go. I bet it takes him a couple of weeks. Two weeks to turn into central midfield. At centre mid... He'll be way better. He'll be like high 70s, I would believe. Going up to like 77. But even that, I think it might be better to get him as a winger. Maybe. I think centre mid, smartest decision right now. It's only going to ETA two weeks. So let's go and see that. Let's see the increase in overall there. And then take a look at him as a right winger. We've also got FIFA tracker so we can look at those position changes straight away but two weeks not gonna wait that long and that is now the end of the episode take care guys see you later